You may not be aware that the next generation of medications will be drugs linked to red blood cells. In particular, RBCs enhance the effectiveness of therapeutic proteins. However, problems with production of protein-linked RBCs have hindered this field. Recently, a new method for linking therapeutic proteins to RBCs has been developed, which could accelerate progress in this field. Red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes, are found in your blood vessels. They carry oxygen from your lungs throughout your body using a molecule called hemoglobin. RBCs are a specialized cell, biconcave in shape and without a nucleus. RBCs are either autologous or allogeneic. Autologous RBCs are your own. Allogeneic RBCs are from a donor and may lead to infection or immunization. For example, Immunization can occur if your RBCs have the M antigen and you receive a transfusion of donor red blood cells with the N antigen. If you produce antibodies against the N antigen, then you may not be able to receive additional RBCs with this antigen. Most methods for creating protein-linked RBCs use autologous blood. However, some methods use allogeneic blood. Drugs can be linked to RBCs in order to extend the drug's lifespan, to reduce the drug's adverse effects, or to regulate the drug's location in the body. In general, drugs can be loaded within RBCs or on the surface of RBCs. Genetic Engineering Genetic engineering can be used to attach a therapeutic protein within or on the surface of RBCs. Genetic engineering involves manipulating stem cells or progenitor cells. The stem cells are then cultured in a laboratory into RBCs. Although genetic engineering may be the long-term solution for creating drug-linked RBCs, it is an expensive and labor-intensive process. It is not the immediate solution to creating protein-linked RBCs. Internal loading of RBCs Hypoosmotic dialysis is a method for loading therapeutic proteins inside of RBCs. Hypoosmotic dialysis involves placing RBCs in a hypotonic media containing the drug of interest. The hypotonic media will create openings in the RBC, allowing the drug and media to enter the RBC, causing RBC expansion. By restoring the tonicity, the openings in the RBC will be sealed and the drug will be trapped inside. For large-scale manufacturing, allogeneic RBCs are loaded using dialysis machinery at centralized locations. The product is then shipped to the patient's healthcare facility. Because hypoosmotic dialysis requires allogeneic RBCs, machinery, and product shipment, it is not a convenient method for creating drug-linked RBCs. Other methods exist for loading drugs inside of RBCs. Electroporation uses electricity to get drugs inside of RBCs. Alternatively, drugs can be attached to cell-penetrating peptides which naturally enter cells. Both of these methods are currently inferior to hypoosmotic dialysis. Methods for attaching drugs onto the surface of RBCs were developed to be more convenient than genetic engineering and internal loading. Therapeutic proteins can be linked onto RBCs using biotin and streptavidin. First, RBCs are biotinylated, then streptavidin is reacted with biotin, and then a biotinylated protein is reacted with streptavidin. Although the biotin-streptavidin method does not require machinery, it is labor-intensive because RBCs must be washed after each step. Affinity loading is more convenient than the biotin-streptavidin method. Affinity loading of RBCs involves linking a drug to either an antibody or peptide which has a high affinity for an RBC antigen. When the composite drug is injected into the patient's bloodstream, the drug will bind to the RBC. Although affinity binding methods are convenient, there are no antigens which are universal to all humans. Some individuals may lack a specific RBC antigen, and some may have variations in the structure of the antigen. Until recently, methods for creating protein-linked RBCs were either inconvenient or would not have universal applicability to all human RBCs. At Biconcavity, we sought to design the ideal method for linking therapeutic proteins to RBCs.
a method which was convenient, universal, and safe. Our solution to creating protein-linked RBCs is activated protein erythrocyte crosslinking, or APEX. APEX involves activating a protein using NHS or sulfo NHS reagents. The activated protein can then be lyophilized and stored as a dry chemical. RBCs are then obtained from a patient and then washed. Mixing the activated protein with the washed erythrocytes will result in protein-linked RBCs. APEX is an ideal method because activated proteins are dry stable and can be stored until needed. In addition, the coupling reaction takes less than 30 minutes and does not damage the RBC. Regarding safety, a similar chemical known as sulfo-NHS activated biotin has been used to produce biotin-linked RBCs which are considered safe for humans and even neonates. Apex is a new method for creating protein-linked RBCs. Unlike other methods, it is convenient, universal, and safe. At Biconcavity, we hope to use Apex to advance RBC therapies for patients. Visit biconcavity.com for more information.